In order to leave a good legacy behind and a good work, we have to be careful on condition. If a person does their work and their good deed solely for worldly gain and no hereafter gain, the hereafter is not even in their mind. Or number two, they do it solely to show off and so that people can praise them for their ego, for their popularity, for their fame, and purely only for money. And that's it. No sign of any intention for Allah or the hereafter. Then those actions, brothers and sisters, if they are acts of worship, such as salat, then it's, it's a problem. It's, it's shirk. It's making partners with Allah. How can you pray when you're supposed to be doing for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and a person does it in order to please people? If that's the intention, that salat is in vain, and it is a major sin and shirk. If it is a non-worship act, such as worldly acts, it's, you can do it for the, you can show it off, but you, if it does it's not for the sake of Allah, there is no legacy left that will benefit you in the hereafter. There's no rewards for you except what you gained in the worldly reward. And for example, if a person shows off their car, the car is not an act of worship, and they show it off to please people, and that's all, the only reason why, and they do it with that intention. We cannot judge people's intention, by the way, brothers and sisters. I can't look at somebody and say, look at this guy with his rims and shiny car. He's trying to impress people. That's haram of me to judge that person's heart. Don't ever do that, brothers and sisters, because now you've fallen into a problem, and that is you are judging the unseen. And who is the only one who knows the unseen? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So don't ever judge a person's heart. However, I'm talking to you as an individual. If you yourself, you, every person knows himself, if I do that, if I buy that thing, if I drive that thing, if I dress in that way, if I say that thing, if I post that thing solely and purely because I want to impress people and my life is based on impressing people, then that's all I'm going to get. I have no other reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, Chapter 18, verse 105, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Say, O Muhammad, shall we tell you who will be the greatest losers in respect of their works? It will be those whose effort went astray in the life of the world and who believe nevertheless that they are doing good. They thought they're doing good, but they went astray with their work. Those are the ones who refuse to believe in the revelations of their Lord and that they are bound to meet Him. Hence, all their deeds have come to naught. They are worthless, and we shall assign no weight to them on the day of resurrection. So there are two types of people. Those who don't believe in the hereafter and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and those who do believe in the hereafter and Allah, but their actions were done solely and only for anything other than Allah, other than the hereafter, other than goodness, and only for their own selfish selves, and only so that they can receive only the worldly benefit and nothing else. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks here about acts of worship and acts of goodness that are meant to be pleasing to Allah. Riya, showing it off. Now some people may ask, what if I do an act of goodness and I get some money for it, such as I teach Quran or I teach Islam or I give da'wah or I give a khutbah or I'm an imam of a masjid or I share some material online and I prepare them for Islamic purposes to teach people. The answer to that, brothers and sisters, is that the majority of the scholars say this is permissible. Because of the hadith, which is in Bukhari, where the Prophet Sallallahu said to his companion, one of the companions who had done a service for someone who was sick and he did a ruqya, so he read some Quran for them, and they gave him uh, some wealth, and a reward or some payment. And they said, you took a payment for reciting the Quran. And when they went to the Prophet Sallallahu they said, he did this, Ya Rasulullah, and he said, the best type of reward to receive for is the Quran. 
the best type of reward to receive for is the Quran. The hadith is in Bukhari, and I think I can actually bring it up because some people will have a problem with that, wouldn't they? You got uh, keyboard warriors. I'm sorry, there, there are a lot of keyboard warriors. They just write without thinking. The hadith is in Bukhari, number 5405. One of the biggest rights of receiving reward for is the Quran. The only thing that the scholars said not to do is a person who sits in front of people and recites and says, now pay me. That's not allowed in Islam. Or a person who goes to pray and says, pay me for my prayer. That, that's obviously shirk and haram. But if a person puts effort to teach people and they prepare material and they take their time off, and for some people this is the only thing they do, and they have to leave their worldly work, then how are they going to survive? How do they pay for their rent? How do they pay for their bills? How do they pay for their family to feed them, brothers and sisters? So there are scholars and ulama who we need to pay for to help in order to help the community. And this is considered a sadaqah, insha'Allah, from the community. Uh, so those who say, oh, they can't, and they call the kuffar and mushrikeen, really, honestly, I advise you to study Islam well and ask the scholars properly, and don't just throw words around. Um, everything we are judged for. Even when you write stuff on social media, whether a person's jealous or they're trying to attack a person or they're trying to judge a person, Allah's going to ask you about that. 